is MGTOW too political? I think it's getting taking as political, which is I find quite peculiar. Um, and I have to question why it's okay for somebody to be a feminist, but somebody in MGTOW is seen as sexist. MGTOW is not sexist. As I've said before, there's a separation between manosphere and MGTOW. MGTOW is predominantly men going their own way. It's not about uh, being anti-woman, anti-this. It's actually just holding the hand up and saying, you know what, I don't want to deal with you anymore. There is nothing wrong with that. That's a personal choice. That is a um, an inward thing where it doesn't need to be projected or it's not trying to change the world or anything else. It is being selective in deciding to go your own way. Is it wrong for priests to be celibate? Is that, is that wrong? Because I would say that that would be on that same sort of path because at the end of the day, it's a personal choice of their own journey. But I am saying that if you promoted yourself as MGTOW, you, you could actually get in trouble at work sometimes. Not because of anything you've done, but simply a lot of people do not understand MGTOW. It doesn't mean don't be MGTOW, it just means be very selective on how you use it sometimes. Unless people actually understand it. Um, and like I said, the big problem you get is MGTOW is quiet. Feminists demanding this, that and the other are loud. As such, they get a voice and get to be abusive and bullying tactics and threatening and wanting their own way at the same time where MGTOW just is sort of like I don't want to engage with you which is the <laughs> which is why I find it peculiar because I find feminists far far more political and people that I wouldn't want to engage with um, but is there anything wrong with that? I would have to say no because from my point of view I shouldn't have to engage with somebody that has such a narrow window and that's a personal choice. I don't have to engage with feminist issues in the workplace. I don't have to engage with it in my civil life. At the end of the day, it's not something I have to get involved with. It's often pushed on others, but at the same time, like MGTOW, I quite happily reject it in the sense of, I don't want to know. Well, I want this, I want I don't care. I don't have to listen to you. I think. If you want this and want that, go and tell somebody else that wants to listen. Because my own view, I'm not listening. That's it. Um, and I do think this is the problem, because a lot of this stuff that is being instigated, people are getting too much voice, and I'll cover that in another topic. But I just want to uh, bring the MGTOW thing up, because I do think it is being uh, becoming political, because it's being used by other people in the sense that it's anti-woman, anti-this, anti-that, when in fact it is not. It's not in any way. Some of the stuff in the manosphere is anti-woman, anti-this, anti-that. MGTOW generally is just leave us alone, we do our own thing. Um, which is why I can support it, because at the end of the day, I will be honest, I, I am a strong believer in equality. But equality is not the version that feminists come up with, or pretty much most councils, governments, whatever. Equality is equality. You know, at the end of the day, if people have genetics and stuff that want them to go into nursing or engineering or whatever, you should not turn around and say, right, you can't be a nurse, you have to be an engineer. And the same way you can't say, you can't be an engineer, you've got to be a nurse. Because people had their own careers in here. People are not programmed the same. Male and females are not the same. And I do hear the frustration from some of these feminists as if they they are seeking something that doesn't exist. It's very peculiar. Um, it's like listening to Jordan Peterson when he was talking to somebody about the 7%, I mean the woman who was in there, 7%, uh, 7 of the top 100 jobs on, I think it was the, I'm not sure if it was London or not, it might be London, uh, for the FTSE, are owned by, are, are run by men, uh, sorry, seven only 7 women out of 100 or whatever. That's because there's so many dynamics in there, but she wouldn't accept it. She wouldn't accept the fact that the guys that are predominantly doing this have given up their life for business. I don't know any woman, and quite literally I do not know any woman that would make the same level of commitment as some other people I know in business. 
I'm talking about guys that get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to take a call for Dubai at the same time they'll be in the office at 8 a.m. and they'll still be in the office at 11 p.m. and they're still taking conference calls even around the clock and may even sleep in the office. That's life at the top. I don't know any woman that would put up with that. I don't know any woman that um, would get to a certain level and be able to push above it. Doesn't mean they don't exist, I'm just saying I don't know any. And a lot of guys I know simply can't do it. When Carillion collapsed, the majority of people I worked with, did they go and look for another job where they weren't? They all retired. Very few of them are actually working anywhere because as soon as that opportunity came to stop, they stopped. Because it's on social hours, it's being away from home a lot, it's stressful, it's a lot of um, bureaucracy, a lot of politics, a lot of stuff that people do not like in a work environment. So when the opportunity come where somebody says you're being made redundant, they went, okay. The, the first week is, well, what am I going to do after now? I need another job. And then they start to see that they're entitled to pensions and stuff um, that some of them have accumulated before they even joined the company. Because, um, for example, some of them are ex-Navy, ex-military, etc. So they have pension funds that they haven't even really engaged with, as well as some of the private ones. Because, I mean, when I got to work before, worked for British Coal, worked for uh, the nuclear industry, and another guy worked for, um, what was it? I think it was to do with mining and the railways. That was at the railways. And the point being is, as soon as they were made redundant, some money started getting activated from pension funds and things that they had even forgotten about. So they would simply just went, opportunities here. So they retired. So my point being is, if you've got people actually in the industry that would take that jump without second thought, bang, gone, then why would it be populated with women that often have a different makeup in the sense that they're family orientated, they're social orientated, and many other things that wouldn't fit the dynamic of somebody that's in this business which can be not only are you happy working alone a lot of the time but you're dealing with people trying to take your job you're trying to take the job from the person above you there's a lot of devious stuff that goes on just in that environment so why would somebody that self praises or needs people to praise them and all this sort of stuff want to be in that environment the answer is they don't. And that's the reality why there's not so many women in these jobs is they're undesirable jobs. They're high paying, don't get me wrong, they're high paying. But sacrifices are marriage, life, and pretty much everything else. You know, you get a new car, you get a good job, you get good pay. But good job does not mean family friendly hours. It does not mean being at home at five o'clock at night. It does not mean um, being home at the weekends. I mean, when I was in uh, the Middle East, for example, uh, I was in Oman for four and a half months, seven days a week working, longest days, 20 hours. When I was in Qatar, I was only there for two, I think I was only there about two weeks. But that was two weeks, seven days a week, long days again. Dealing with the hospitals, in Premier Inn, nine months of a year. Premier Inn's a hotel chain. So that's why, you know, and this is the thing, you can't have these discussions with people because they don't get it. They get it offended and angry that you're trying to say, look, look at it logically. If you want to do it, there is nothing stopping. Men dominate this, men don't. There's a reason for that. They're built up differently. They have different traits, they have, the ability to do this stuff. It's the same reason that you will find a lot of ex-military personnel in these types of roles. Because they used to working away from home. There's many a guy I know wouldn't work away from home. If they're away for two two days, their wife's getting on their case. Never mind for months. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching.